What's up guys, it's Blocky here, and welcome to yet another video. It's been a while since I last uploaded, or came in really close up to my face. Um, I'm hoping that if I get closer up, it sounds better. Um, because obviously I don't have my mic at the moment, I can't find my mic, so I've ordered a new one. Um, it should be coming in the next week or so. So I need to kind of get the sound better. I'm going to bring, bring the laptop closer to me as I'm filming it on my laptop or my webcam. Normal. Anyway. Um, the thing I want to talk about today is something that happened last Thursday, if I remember correctly, is the fact that Diego Puet did not sign a new contract for Charlton Athletic. Um, it's hugely disappointing, in my opinion, that Diego hasn't signed. And I think in most people's opinion, it's hugely disappointing because he's such a talented player. He plays so well for us. He just... He's got so much talent, a ridiculous amount of talent, and just everything about him makes out that he's going to be a brilliant player for the future. He's 19 years old, and he broke into our team in about the February time, January, February kind of time. Um, I think his debut was a League Cup game against Oxford, or an FA Cup game against Oxford, and he played, I don't know how he played in that game, I wasn't there, um, it was an away game, and by what it sounds, he played quite well. Then he, as he started to get started in the league more and more often, he started to see his true quality, how, just how good he was. The guy plays uh, as a holding midfielder for Charlton, and he he's just the perfect holding midfielder. He's quite, when I say strong, he can be strong on the ball. Sometimes he can be pushed off quite easily. He's a strong tackler. He likes to tackle. He's comfortable on the ball. Straight away, as soon as you see him, he, as soon as he made his debut, he was commanding the play. He was like commanding players, picking the ball, he would play it back out there. He, he was just commanding the midfield at the age of 19. And he really was uh, a gem who, or a diamond in the rough, if you like, about what was going on in Charlton at the time, about how we were struggling. And he was playing so well. Um, eventually, going on to win the Player of the Year award. Despite the fans vote player of the year, despite only playing just about like six ever at least, and that's incredible. Only playing, I think he only played like twenty games and made a six player of the year award. Uh, I think he deserved it based off his performances, but not necessarily. I don't think he deserved it because he didn't play that many games. I personally voted for Michael Morrison, but that's just how it is sometimes. Uh, they do it sometimes, like the player, the player who was in the fans' head at the time, which would have been Boy, because he's been playing so well recently, rather than the players that have been consistent throughout the season, such as Michael Morrison, such as Harry Wilson. And he, but uh, that's not the video. But the, last Thursday, it was announced that he will not be signing, will not be extending his Charlton Athletic contract. He'll be leaving in the summer. And. This is for many reasons. The reason they stated was that he wanted to explore his options elsewhere. If you don't know, he has been linked to the likes of Barcelona, Manchester City, Chelsea. You know, he's been linked to huge clubs. Now, what the reason... Okay, first off, am I happy that he's left? Of course I'm not. I'm gutted that he's left. He's such a good player. Do I think he's the world's best player? No, I don't. I think he just needs first team football. If he's going to go to a team, please, Diego, go to a team that will give you first team football. Because that's what a player needs. I think he'd be in better stand for Charlton, getting first team football, getting experience for at least another year. And at least give us another year after everything. Like, he's brought you through the youth ranks and all this. He's brought you through the youth ranks and I think he's been out for eight years or something like that. Just please credit us with giving us another year of seeing your immense quality on the pitch. There's nothing I would love more than to see Diego play, play in a Charlton kit for another year at least. Because he's such a great talent. But his decision to move on, I, I respect. I respect the fact that he's decided that he wants to move on. Um, there's a lot of hate for him on Twitter by other Charlton fans. Saying that he doesn't, that he owes the club his player. And to a certain extent he does. But he doesn't owe... The one thing that I don't like is the abuse and stuff like that, but he doesn't owe this current Charlton, if you know what I mean. He doesn't owe Bowen Boucher, 
I've grown some space since I've been here for the last couple of months. Just, okay, there's not four months that we had broken into players, broke into the first team, but he's only been here for, he hasn't, he wasn't one who gave that made the decision, Chris Powell made the decision to put him in the team, and then Jose Rico gave the decision to put him in. I can't help but think, if Jose Rico and Chris Powell could do any chance, then Diego would have been more willing to sign Luis Felipe. Because I think it's the instability of the club at the moment. I think it's getting pretty stable, but it's not stable like that. And the fact that there's a new manager coming, new chairman, everything's a bit up in the air about Chelsea at the moment. So I think what Diego's people, I guess, that his agent, his advisors, his family, whatever, whoever helped him make this decision, um, obviously thought that it, the club wasn't stable and he wouldn't learn, he wouldn't learn his craft best there. I, on the other hand, maybe I've got a bit of biased opinion, but I, on the other hand, believe that this is the best place for him to slip into the youth academy because it's in the deepest youth for talent and he's got a few experienced players like Sir Johnny Jackson, Michael Morrison that will help him learn and he's and that good mix of youth and seniority in the word or experience it's probably a better word even better experience is kind of gives the youth a chance to develop into better stars now what team do you guys think uh, Poirier should sign there's going to be a number of teams signing up for him a number of teams I believe Derby are in for him if he goes and signs for another championship club I'll be annoyed I'm annoyed as it is to be honest, but not. I can see the reasons why he's doing it because he wants to change himself, he wants to give it a go in the Premier League. Oh, that's what I think. If he goes and signs for another championship club, I will, club, I will be a bit annoyed because I feel like he hasn't made any progress. Um, do I think he should make it in the Premier League? I do at a lower level, not at some of the clubs he's been linked with the Man City's, the Chelsea's, the Arsenal's. Not them. He's got no chance of getting into those teams, in all honesty. Not yet, at least. Um, but maybe at a team, maybe who his dad manages, Sunderland, or a, a smaller team like that, or even a team like Everton, who give youth a chance from like the very beginning. If you look at Everton, even John Stones, Ross Barkley, uh, players like that all give it a chance. And that's what Everton do. So a team that will give him a chance in the first team, um, to at least know what's best for him. Um, after everything that some Chelsea fans have said to him on Twitter, I very much doubt he'll want to come back on loan to Chelsea because they it's been horrid. Honestly, some of the stuff has been horrible. Like I don't understand why he's been abused. He's moved on to bigger and better things, and that's how I see it. Um, am I annoyed that he's left? Yes. Um, and am I, do I think it's the right decision? No, but. He's made that decision, and that's all that matters. I mean, to move on, he's brought in a new loan in, you know, Byron, as we brought in. We've still got Carson Hughes, one of our youth players, still got Jackson, our captain. It's not like we're weak in the centre midfield. I think we just need to move on and get over it, like we did with Permigan, like we did when Shelby left, like we did when Parker left. It's not a weird thing for a youth player that's been brought up through Charlton, I'm not Permigan, it's not part of it, but I believe before really proving himself, or not proving himself, but before uh, giving everything he can to Charlton, Scott Parker played maybe a whole se- maybe a season or a bit before he left and he went to join Chelsea, he never quite reached the heights that he was expected to after Anthony came to Charlton. John Joe Shelby left after a good couple of seasons, to be fair to John Joe, but he never quite, uh, he's still got a chance, he's still got a chance, but he never quite reached the heights that he was expected to. As it is, he's still quite young, so he might still get a chance. Uh, Jermaine Defoe uh, didn't even make a first team appearance for Charlton, but you know, that's how it is in football. Teams like Charlton give huge good players who make, uh, give the players the chance to then develop players, lose out to the bigger teams such as Chelsea, such as Man City, such as Arsenal. Um, so it's unfortunate, but that'll be the end of the video, guys. Please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe, and please watch out for my next live transfer talk.